Next up, we have the Democratic uh, challenger in the 23rd Congressional District, Tracy Matrano. Um, thank you for joining us. We have provided you with four questions and we'd like to ask you to respond to um, the question regarding healthcare policy and how it relates to people with disabilities. You're muted. I think you're still muted. There you go. All you're right, there we go. All right. <laughs> and I come from technology. <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, no, well, first, I uh, want to thank you. And second, I want to say I am not unfamiliar with this community. Uh, my brother, who is four years older than I am, uh, has been in institutional care since 1958. So I have grown up over the long course of the conditions before the reforms, before Medicaid, and uh, have a deep understanding emotionally as well as intellectually as to what that means. He is still in a group home. He lives outside of Rochester in a group home in Victor. Um, in terms of now running for Congress and having a health care policy, I believe that uh, Democrats and all people of this country need to stop fighting about specific plans and put the goals of health care out in front, affordable, available, and it has to be efficient. We have the most inefficient health care system in the world, even though we have, in terms of medical science, uh, fantastic capabilities and qualities. But as a system, it is highly, highly inefficient. I believe that any and all legislation at the congressional level that moves towards the achievement of those goals is the path that Democrats in particular should take, and it'll be much less uh, difficult then for them to get them passed and much more difficult for Republicans to try to push good ideas down political rabbit holes. Let me tell you the three that I've identified for this district. We must have a prohibition against discrimination on the basis of a pre-existing condition. And I can't be more clear about that than to a community of, of uh, people who are working with disabilities. Uh, second, we have to have basic uh, medicines available and not at these outrageous costs where they re-up the patents and so forth. I'm talking about insulin, uh, EpiPens, and uh, the delivery methods for asthma and other respiratory disorders, heart, common heart disorders. Uh, these medicines need to be just given to people or for pennies uh, because it's only pennies to make them. And it is wrong that we keep having so much expense on the back of individuals to just get basic drugs for what they need. Finally, we need to have caps on deductibles and premiums as well as including areas that are left out and become out of pocket, vision, dental, hearing, all of that together. But now let me in the short time uh, state the most important point, I think. To be efficient, it has to be universal. And it does not mean that it has to be one plan or the other, but it must be universal. It is the only way that we can make our healthcare system more efficient in this country and then help everybody including people in the disability community. I'm happy to take a follow-up question. I certainly could talk more lengthily about that, Mr. Patterson, but in four minutes, that's my summary. That was a, I'm sorry, I was muted when I was talking there. So that was a, a very thoughtful response and we appreciate it. We have one more question yes. from uh, self-advocate Chanel Davis. Hello. Hi, Chanel. So, Oh, Chanel froze up a little bit there. Yeah. You know, one of my main platforms, and I'm running twice, is we must have proper broadband deployment. And I probably don't need to list all of the reasons since we're experiencing one of them right here. So Chanel, we lost you there for a minute. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. What are your thoughts on people with disabilities being a part of our community? And what do you think can be done to reduce barriers to full participation? Well, there are so many more programs uh, that we need to create as part of the whole social service network. You know, there's a tension on this at the moment because of the Black Lives Matter movement that 
diminution of uh, domestic violence, abuse and neglect, mental health, physical health, that uh, we only seem to have one approach and it's to send in law enforcement officers. So uh, uh, that whole issue is now illuminating the needs we have throughout society. What we could add to that list is the programs and the law to support the programs in terms of discrimination, moving forward to integrate people of any and all abilities. I was in Steuben County in Corning last week and there was a farmer's market, so I went over to it. I met a family uh, with a, a mother who she said her son was diagnosed with severe autism. No one ever predicted he could speak or have any functionality whatsoever. She created a business where he's making the breads and cookies. And he came up to me and said, can I help you? So she was trying to show me that to just have these diagnoses when people are two and three and perhaps we don't even know the basis upon which these diagnoses are made and locking people in situations where they cannot fully realize their potential and be a part of our communities, we must continue to move away from that. And I would be very much, as I told this mother and this gentleman, this young man, he was probably actually 39 or something, that I am absolutely in support of all of those efforts. You know, when President uh, Trump challenged schools to open and said he was going to withhold federal funds if they didn't, I don't need to tell a group of uh, people in the disability community, the most federal funds that go to education are for the disabled. So I was triply offended that he was using that as a wedge and probably out of his ignorance, not that it would have made any difference to him. But my point being, we have to begin to integrate federal, state, and local efforts, whether it's in giving young people with disabilities another year on their IDEA at the end of this pandemic because they have not had the services they need as a result of social isolation and being sent home from school. They may not have the technology. They may not have the broadband connection. And that is especially true in the 23rd district. So there are things that we need to do even right in the moment. That's a bill that should be passed in Congress today. And when I get there in January, I will be the one to put it up for a vote. But there are all these other programs and segmenting them instead of aligning them has been how and what ways we haven't pooled the greatest efforts that the government can offer to people with disabilities and their communities to have people with disabilities and all of their beauty and talents participating. And that's my goal. Thank you. Uh, greatly appreciate your time and participation today. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir, and thanks everyone. All the Thank best. You.